and this is a nice chance. And, uh, um, the whole gravitation most of the gravitation community come because of this event we all come together. And, and also thanks to me. We are the family and hope to tell them for all this hard work. So, but let me just come, I, I mean the last lecture was uh, really section 5.5, five, the two field equations of Planck H theory, section 5.5, five, the two field equations, equations of Planck H theory. Equation. So I just want to leave the, we have this, as we know, uh, we have a total Lagrangian, which consists of gravitational Lagrangian, <coughs> gravitational Lagrangian today, on the co-frame, on um, the torsion, on the curvature, <coughs> plus a metal Lagrangian L, which depends on, well, also on the co-frame, of course, by construction, and on the metal fields, say psi, and the minimally coupled metal fields, we can also, uh, we have already extended the formalism to, to non-minimal coupling, but let me restrict myself to minimal coupling, that is to say, the first derivatives enter here, is a covariant exterior derivative, and we found that the gravitational uh, field equations, we have two field equations, the first for the translations, the covariant exterior derivative of the translational excitation minus uh, the energy momentum of the gravitational field is equal to the energy momentum of the uh, metal field, and this uh, you may recall um, we defined as the variational derivative of the metal Lagrangian with respect to the code frame. This is just for, for recalling this definition, and we have derived the delta identities and have proven that this tensor is a canonical tensor of classical field theory. And we have the second field equation of gravity. We have the covariant derivative of the translational, or oh, the rotational, the Lorentz um, um, excitation um, minus the gravitational spin tensor S alpha beta is equal to the meta spin alpha beta, which uh, you may recall was just. Uh, introduced as the variational derivative of the metal Lagrangian with respect uh, to the uh, frame. <coughs> and it turned out by using the neutral identities that this is a canonical um, a spin tensor of classical uh, field theory. These are uh, the two field equations, and we have to recall the definition of the excitations like in, in Maxwell's theory, H, the excitations are just minus exponential, uh, the, uh, the uh, Lagrangian of the gravitational field derived with respect to the torsion. And here we have and the Lorentz excitation alpha beta, which is anti-symmetric, 
minus dr uh, v over dr alpha beta anti-symmetric, uh, which is anti-symmetric, of course. I just indicate this here. So this is anti-symmetric. And of course, this is anti-symmetric here and here and here. Uh, and as soon as you specified some Lagrangian, um, you can, I just, you don't need to every time, and it's, uh, if you have more complicated Lagrangian, it's quite, quite time consuming to uh, do all the variations because the watch star is involved, which is quite intricate. And it's very simple. You have a Lagrangian, you uh, compute the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to torsion and curvature. If you substitute it here and you have immediately the field equations. So there is no need to, uh, to, to compute every time the field equations. The field equations are once and uh, uh, for all given by that and we derive this by the neutral uh, machinery. And these quantities are also uh, uh, um, expressed in terms of these excitations. Now, um, I want to, just in order to uh, to make this really uh, 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 more transparent, I mean, I substitute now here the, um, 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 the definitions of these tensors which we had last time and rewrite the field equations again for you uh, in order to, uh, to, uh, to to find the explicit structure. So we can, uh, I rewrite the first field equation, I substitute this definition of the, uh, uh, so I have here minus uh, the covariant exterior derivative of the partial derivative of V with respect to the torsion and now I substitute the definition, which I uh, gave you the last time of the energy tensor of the gravitational field. is the frame E alpha in the Lagrangian in inner product minus parenthesis the frame E alpha in uh, the torsion E beta parenthesis which, and now we have here the translational um, uh, excitation, which is partial derivative uh, with respect to the torsion uh, beta. This is the translational piece, and we have a corresponding rotational piece. If you uh, streamline the formalism, you, you may collect these terms, but I leave it in this way in order to make it more uh, transparent E alpha in R beta gamma parenthesis which and of course now here the partial derivative of V with respect to um, beta gamma bracket and that is equal to the energy the canonical energy momentum of the metal field. So and then let me just, uh, before I discuss it, uh, take the second field equation, which is simpler, the dv over dr alpha beta minus, now it's plus because this s has in its definition, and this is theta alpha, the co-frame, which dv over E T beta and anti-symmetrized over alpha and beta. This is the spin of the gravitational field, and it's interesting that, uh, and this is in accord with what we know from gauge theory. Um, it has uh, the rotational piece, which corresponds to the Lorentz rotations. It has no corresponding piece dv over dr because uh, we know that the gauge field basically and, and uh, um, the Lorentz piece of the gauge field is, is really very much related to inner symmetries because it acts on one point the Lorentz group whereas the translation group 
leads us from one point to a neighboring point. So the Lorenz group is much more uh, similar to, to uh, Bill, Young Mills field than the translational potential. And we know from uh, H, from Young Mills theory, that um, uh, H field cannot have a spin, it can only have helicity. And so it's totally uh, comprehensible that we have only this piece, and that's the only piece and we have here the spin of the metal field. So these are again the field equations, but now more or less in explicit form. <clears throat> All you have to specify now is a gravitational Lagrangian and substitute it here. Well, you have to build the partial derivatives here, 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 and you have to substitute V here. And then you have to fill the equations explicitly. And I, I, I hope you agree that this uh, transparent form of the field equation, and this is uh, true for all Lagrangians. The Lagrangians are only uh, if they depend on theta, t, and r, not on derivatives of that. Gauge theory, usually uh, like Young Mills theory, is just a, a square in the field strength f, f square is the h r portion of, of the uh, field, uh, field theory. So, uh, do you have uh, questions to this uh, representation? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, and, and this framework is, uh, and these field equations are basically the outcome of gauging the breakout. So if you believe that the gauging of the Poincaré group makes sense, and why should it not? Because uh, we know that gauge theories are uh, all around, and uh, that translations uh, are related to gravity is clear, because the energy momentum tensor is um, um, the source of Einstein's gravity or of Newton's gravity, so a, a translational gauging we need in any case. And since the Poincaré group is a, has a product structure and governs special relativity, we, we should also subscribe to, um, and it's a product structure, a semi-direct product structure, that is to say the translation group and the Lorentz group are intrinsically related in the Poincaré group. They are not only a direct product, a semi-direct, they are linked to each other in a very intricate way. And if we then believe that the uh, gauging of the Poincaré group makes sense, and that's what Chiama and Kibble um, uh, pioneer, uh, following the lead of uh, Weil and Uchiyama, Weil, Jan Mills and Uchiyama, as I pointed out, in the course of my lecture, then this is the result. And you, you have to, uh, uh, and, uh, okay, and now we have to, to look, does it make sense? I mean, is general relativity contained there uh, in this uh, frame? <clears throat> and now, so, uh, as a first test, we can, we can uh, now try and say, well, let us assume that the Lagrangian doesn't depend on torsion. Oh, so let us assume let E B over D T alpha be zero. This is uh, 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 an assumption, just in order to see what the theory then tells us. Then this piece drops out, and what is left in the first field equation is minus E alpha in the Lagrangian, which uh, depends only on curvature now. And this piece vanishes, and there is this piece left, minus E alpha in R beta gamma, which EV over the R, this piece of course is certainly still there. And this is equal to T alpha, the script T alpha. And the second field equation, we have just uh, minus E, and this piece survives, E V over the R alpha beta plus, and this vanishes, 
And so this is equal to x alpha. Okay. And now, of course, the, the simplest choice, there is no torsion. Now you can, of course, assume, you know, of course, from Einstein's theory that it's linear in R. So if you assume a, a Lagrangian which is linear in R, <coughs> Sorry? It's there is yes. a plus here. Here? Yes. Yes. Minus times minus is minus is plus. Um, incidentally, I mean, uh, uh, who I'm seeing, uh, seeing as uh, well, he will work out these lectures and we will jointly uh, produce a manuscript, hopefully, uh, of all these lectures. And, uh, so this will then be distributed if it ever uh, will be finished in all. Okay. So I mean, it's uh, not necessary to provide anything, I hope. Um, and and I'm, I'm very glad that uh, one uh, seen, uh, one seen um, agreed uh, to do that. And so if, if V is linear, V linear in R, Okay, now it, it's very uh, very simple. Then you need um, a Lagrangian which is linear in R. Now the Lagrangian is a four-form, right? And uh, it's linear in R. R is a two-form, R alpha beta, R alpha beta. In order to produce a, a four-form, it's very simple. And I have to kill two indices because the Lagrangian must be scalar valued, of course, a scalar valued four form. Then what I can do is theta to uh, alpha which theta beta. This is a one form times a one form times a two form, R four form. This would be okay. Unfortunately, if you if you look at it, we have already discussed um, 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 the irreducible decomposition then you find out that this is really the totally anti-symmetric piece. This leads to R3, um, maybe number the irreducible pieces of the curvature tensor. And, and, and so this is proportional to, to um, the, if I write it in indices, R, I, J, K, L. And if you multiply by the which in the symbol is a pseudo scalar. <coughs> so this is a pseudo scalar. And, and, and this pseudo scalar cannot qualify as a large ocean. <coughs> we have terribly con conserving pieces, so we need a scalar. <coughs> and then you can then you can appeal to Maxwell's theory, uh, E and Maxwell's theory is proportional on F which star f, we always need a watch star in the Lagrangian in order to make a scalar out of a, a scalar valued four form. So you want to place a star somewhere in order to get something decent. So you can, for instance, uh, put a star here. I change now this here, the watch star. Is, does it make sense? The watch star of the two form is a two form, so we have a four form, so this would qualify. Now we, we have a formula for watch stars. If, if you have here a two form and here a two form, you can also place the star in front of that. And this is the Lagrangian which we take. So we have then the Lagrangian <coughs> B equals. Uh, for dimensional reasons, this is uh, kappa is the Einstein gravitational for uh, constant, um, and two is the conventional factor. Then we have watch star of theta alpha, which theta beta, which r alpha beta, and this uh, and this is really the curvature scalar. If you uh, uh, look at the uh, irreducible decomposition, you find out that this is R6 alpha beta, the scalar. And that's what we want. 
And now, of course, you can immediately see you, uh, you compute um, um, H alpha beta, which is minus EV over PR alpha beta. Okay, so you get minus 1 over 2 kappa times star theta alpha each theta beta, right? So this is the simplest Lagrangian which doesn't contain uh, explicitly the torsion. And you substitute it here in the field equation. This is a, a simple thing. You, here you have this uh, r beta gamma times this piece. And, and here you just substitute the Lagrangian. And this is my exercise number one for students who want to solve this exercise. Exercise number one. Uh, compute the field equations. Compute the field equations. Field equations for this V equals one over two <coughs> K times which uh, uh, And uh, the output is, is very simple. Uh, we define, and we define, uh, we have already defined, but let me remind you, eta, alpha, beta, gamma is by definition E alpha in eta, um, no, e gamma in eta, alpha, beta. So this is uh, uh, the one form and we define the field equation one half over eta uh, alpha beta gamma times r of which r beta gamma is equal kappa times energy momentum and one half times eta <coughs> alpha beta gamma which torsion Torsion gamma is equal kappa times S alpha beta. And that is the Einstein Cartan theory which we had before, now written in XCA calculus. So this is the Einstein Cartan Lagrangian. So this is the simplest theory where the Lagrangian doesn't depend on torsion and which is linear in the curvature. This is the Einstein Cartan field equations. which we derived in components earlier in, in, in one of the last lectures. Uh, so, and of course, we already discussed that if the spin vanishes, then the torsion vanishes. You can resolve this with respect to the torsion and express it in terms of the spin. And uh, if the torsion vanishes, the curvature tensor uh, fulfills additional um, um, algebraic symmetry such that the Ricci tensor becomes symmetric and then you have here the symmetric energy momentum tensor. So this uh, GR is a special case, is a special case, special case for um, S alpha beta equals zero. Um, and, and we have discussed that einstein cartan equation and einstein cartan theory is a viable gravitational theory and that at a critical length of L Einstein Cartan, critical, I want to call it critical, critical length of Einstein Cartan theory is about 10 to the minus 27 centimeters. So it's uh, um, uh, way above um, the Planck length and so, so the Einstein Cartan as we I discussed I gave you some references to new work on einstein cartan theory in cosmology, and it's clear that in the beginning of the cosmos, the einstein cartan theory uh, leads to big uh, differences as compared to Einstein's theory, and you can certainly uh, get here different cosmological models as developed already in the literature since quite some time, but 
recently in the last two years that some uh, new models proposed, and I refer back to what I uh, told you uh, on the uh, uh, in one of the last lectures. Okay, so we know that this framework makes a lot of sense, at least in a special case, and of course it shows that this framework is consistent and that there are uh, uh, no mistakes in it uh, in the sketch procedure which we develop because we recover a few of the equations which we know very well and uh, so we can trust uh, this framework. Now, uh, let me point out that this einstein cartan theory is from a gauge theoretical point of view a very degenerate um, system. Why? Let us look at the left-hand side, left-hand side of the field equations. Of the first, I call it first and second field equation. Left-hand side of the first field equation. Okay, what are the leading R? You know, I mean, our variables are connection and code frame. And R depends on first derivative of gamma. And on, 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 on theta. And on gamma, of course. It does not depend on first derivatives of, of the theta because there is R is only depending on, on, on the first derivatives of gamma and of gamma. And this is uh, a proportional to the kappa times uh, the energy. And the left hand side of the second it depends on the first derivative of the co frame, on the co frame. And of course, I mean, the connection is only uh, uh, in no uh, derivative. So this is proportional to theta as well to theta. And so you see quite evidently that this is a very degenerate theory because um, the, the field variables, connection, and, and first of all, in the first field equation, there, there feature uh, the rotational field strength, and here's the translational field strength. So the rotational uh, 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 field strength um, is sourced by the translational uh, carbon, and the translational field strength is sourced by the rotational, by the Lorentz carbon.